Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the City of Lewiston's 2018 inauguration ceremony. Would you please rise for the procession of municipal officials? elected official inauguration ceremony. On behalf of all the elected officials, I thank you all for attending tonight's ceremonies. Uh, we will please have, we are pleased to have the newly elected officials, city administrator, city clerk, and school superintendent. I will now call the meeting to order. Will the members of the combined unit color guard, comprised of members of the Lewis and Fire Department and Lewis and Police Department, please present, please proceed into the auditorium and present the colors. Please join me in saying the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Will the Lewiston High School senior, Haley Martlock, please come to the stage to sing the national anthem. Still there. 
of the combined color guard please post the colors at the rear of the stage. We will now have the invocation. Will John Roberts, chaplain for the Lewis and Fire Department, please come forward to offer the invocation. Join me in prayer, if you would. To the only eternal God, our Father and Lord Jesus, we come this evening in this public setting thanking you for each official that occupies an office in this city, and in particular our newly elected mayor. We understand according to Romans 13 of the Holy Scriptures that there is no authority except from you, and those that exist have been raised up by you. We pray today that our Mary and, Mary, Mary, mayor and all other members of our city's governing body will continually bear in mind and embrace this one truth, that ultimately it was not the will of the people that placed them in these positions, but your divine hand of providence. May they have an acute awareness that all of their deliberations in heart and on record and their decisions are ever before you to whom we must all one day give an account. May they therefore seek to carry out this sacred trust with all integrity, veracity, and equality. Grant them the wisdom and patience needed to handle the affairs of this city in a way that promotes peace and prosperity for all its citizens. And lastly, grant them the grace of personal integrity to remain qualified for office during their terms of service. I offer this prayer in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the Savior of the world, the soon coming King and Judge of heaven and earth. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Chaplain Robbins. Will everyone please be seated? <clears throat> to excuse me a second, I, my nose is leaking like a sieve here. <laughs> Six years ago when I became mayor, apprehension ran high in City Hall. I had won on the promise to reform welfare. Listening to the media coverage, depending upon which station you were listening to, I was either famous or infamous. I was picketed outside City Hall. <clears throat> Petitions were submitted calling for my resignation. I was branded a racist, and I was continually smeared by the press. This because I felt that you should keep your own money and not turn it over to shiftless, lazy leeches. But my smearing by the left and the press did not anger me. I, it told me I was doing what I had been elected to do. I was also making those on the left apoplectic. Newsflash. I never, I, took the, I never took the criticism personally. 
It was part of being, part of the job. So a lot of these people did try to, thought they were giving me a, the zinc. I used to just go home and laugh about it. A while later, the dialogue changed. At breakfast at Simonis's between Auburn Mayor, current Auburn Mayor Jason Levesque and myself, we struck an agreement <coughs> that the new home to Argo would be the Kresge building on Lisbon Street. This resulted in a much needed jobs, revenue, and beautifying of the area. The new Pettengill Park on College Street was another achievement I am proud of. It was achieved through a public-private initiative. History, history will be the ultimate judge of my success or failure. But any success that I had is due to the hard work, and I want to stress this, due to the hard work of Lewiston City staff. And I thank them all. Anybody here that's from the, the Lewiston City staff, I thank you for the great job you did during the six years that I was mayor. I would be remiss if I did not remember the late Gene Tardif, whose hard work and belief in me put me in the mayor's office. Ultimately, I failed to achieve my goal of welfare reform. Thus, in my mind, I will look at this as my biggest failure as mayor. I have enjoyed being your mayor, and I love this city, I love the people here, and thank you very much. God bless you. Okay, now we're going. Will the city clerk please collect the election credentials and present the official election results of the 2017 City of Lewiston Municipal Election? I have examined the election present credentials and have found everything to be in order. Will the city clerk please introduce the elected officials? The following citizens of Lewiston have been elected to serve as municipal officials of the city of Lewiston. Shane D. Bouchard, Mayor. James L. Lyson, City Councilor, Ward 1, and we will note that Mr. Lyson is ill this evening and unable to join us. Zachary T. Pettengill, City Councilor, Ward 2. Alicia M. Ray, City Councilor, Ward 3. Michael A. LaJoy, City Councilor, Ward 4. Kristen S. Cloutier, City Councilor, Ward 5. Jolene Landry Beam, City Councilor, Ward 6. Michael J. Marcotte, City Councilor Ward 7. Megan D. Parks, School Committee, Member at Large. <coughs> Renee P. Cordemash, School Committee Ward 1. Monique Roy, School Committee Ward 2. Francis N. Gagnon, School Committee Ward 3. Tanya M. Estabrook, City uh, School Committee Ward 4. Luke D. Jensen, School Committee Ward 5 and Tina L. Hutchinson, School Committee, Ward 7. Will the city clerk <clears throat> please administer the oath of office to Mayor-elect Shane D. Bouchard?
please raise your right hand and repeat after me. I, Shane D. Bouchard. I, Shane D. Bouchard. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support the Constitution. That I will support the Constitution. Of the United States. Of the United States. And of the State of Maine. And of the State of Maine. And that I will faithfully discharge. And that I will faithfully discharge. To the best of my abilities. To the best of my abilities. The duties on incumbent on me. The duties incumbent on me. As mayor. As mayor. For the city of Lewiston. For the city of Lewiston. According to the laws of this state. According to the laws of this state. And the charter of the city of Lewiston. In the charter of the city of Lewis. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. <laughs> conduct the appointment of the school committee member from Ward 6, and I hereby nominate Mark Kerr of Ward 6 to serve on the school committee. Yeah. Councilor Cloutier. Do we have a second? Councilor Marcotte. It has been moved and seconded Mark Kerr be appointed the Ward 6 representative to the school committee. All those in favor, please signify by a show of hands. It is unanimous. Um, Mark Kerr is hereby appointed as a member of the Lewiston School Committee. We will now conduct the election for the City Council representative to the school committee. And I would like to nominate Alicia Ray, Councillor from Ward 3. Councillor Cloutier. Thank you. Do we have a second? Councillor Pattengill. Thank you. Um, all those in favor, please signify with a show of hands. It is unanimous. Um, Councillor Ray will now be our representative to the school committee. We're going to take a step back here. Um, at this time, I would like to ask the city clerk if she could please administer the oath of office to the city council. <laughs> highlight all you want. I don't get it. Please state your name one at a time. I'm Zachary T. Beth Nelson. I'm Alicia Ray. I'm Michael Lee Gillard. I'm Alicia Ray. I'm Alicia Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I'll support the Constitution. That I'll support the Constitution. Of the United States. Of the United States. And of the State of Maine. And of the State of Maine. And that I'll faithfully discharge. And that I'll faithfully discharge. To the best of my abilities. The duties incumbent on me as a city councilor for the city of Lewiston, according to the laws of this state and the charter of the city of Lewiston. So help me God. Congratulations. At this time, will the city clerk please administer the oath of office to the members of the Lewiston School Committee. Please raise your right hand and repeat after me. Please state your name one at a time. Do you solemnly swear that I'll support the Constitution of the United States and of the State of Maine and that I will faithfully discharge to the best of my abilities the duties incumbent on me as a school committee member for the City of Lewiston 
according to the laws of this state and the charter of the city of Lewiston. So help me God. Congratulations. At this time, we'll now conduct the election for the president of the city council. Do we have any nominations from the city council for a member to serve as council president? Mr. Mayor? Councilor Wright. I move that councilor is two years award five be nominated as council president. Thank you. Do we have a second? Mr. Mayor? Councilor Fenton, go. I second the motion. Okay. It has been moved and seconded. And the councilor Cloutier of Ward 5 be nominated as city council president. All those in favor, please signify with a show of hands. It is unanimous. Councillor Cloutier has been elected to serve as the City Council President. <laughs> Madam President, will you please proceed to the podium for your remarks? Good evening and welcome. Can everyone hear me? Doesn't. Um, so it's an honor to share this night with you all and to be here in the Gendro Franco Franco Center. Uh, being here reminds me of the foundation this city was built upon and of the many individuals who came before us, dedicating their hard labor and service, not only to create a strong community, but a home, our home. I'd like to begin by acknowledging the service of Mayor Bob McDonald. While Bob and I come from different sides of a political spectrum, we have established a respectful and productive working relationship, and I am grateful to him for his commitment and dedication to the city of Lewiston over the past six years. <laughs> to those elected officials who are not returning, Councilors LaJoy, Golden, and LaChance, and school committee members Scott, St. Pierre, Martin, Roy, and Shannon, your commitment to this community has not gone unnoticed, and I am personally so thankful to have served with and learned from each of you. Please join me in another round of applause as an expression of gratitude for our outgoing mayor, councillors, and school committee members. <laughs> and secondly, I'd like to congratulate our incoming mayor and the members of the 2018-2019 City Council and School Committee. I welcome our newest members and look forward to continued collaboration with those who are returning. In the most recent election, our community decided on a direction for the future of the city of Lewiston. And it is important that we now, together, face that future as one city and one community. Because we will always be stronger today and tomorrow if we work together by sharing ideas, re-energizing re our past efforts when they have been successful, and exploring new possibilities. We must be civil, open, and willing to find solutions that work for everyone. That being said, I'd like to also take a moment to acknowledge the community building work being done by the various nonprofit organizations we have here in Lewiston. From the YWCA and Maine Immigrant and Refugee Services to Tree Street Youth and Healthy and Ruscoggin, each one provides a vital service and fulfills a crucial need for the individuals they serve. One such organization, the Trinity Jubilee Center, celebrated its 25th anniversary this past year. When the soup kitchen opened in 1991, it served an average of 75 people per day. That number has since doubled. It seems that as the community need has grown, so have the hearts of those running and volunteering with these organizations, giving of their time, talents, and selves. And lastly, I'd like to second Mayor McDonald in thanking every employee of the city of Lewiston and the Lewiston School Department. We, have, we are blessed to have such committed faculty and staff, so please know that we appreciate your efforts. I am honored to have been selected to serve a second term as the Lewiston City Council President. As many of you may know, I grew up here, left seeking education and adventure, and returned to raise my own family. I, stand, I stood here before you two years ago, singing the praises of my hometown and all that had been accomplished in the previous two years. And I am proud to say that once again, I can stand before you tonight and affirm that we continue to have much to celebrate. With more than $47 million in economic development, 2016-2017 was a busy time in Lewiston. L.L. Mm -hmm. Bean relocated their boot manufacturing operation to the former VIP building on Lexington Street, taking on a 20-year lease and investing $1 million in equipment. They plan to add 100 jobs to their current operation. 
Geiger Brothers transformed their current manufacturing space into Class A office space for their corporate headquarters. The $12 million investment of this fourth generation family owned global business signifies their commitment to our community and desire to be a part of its future. Rink Advertising took occupancy of the former Grant's department store on Lisbon Street, and the redevelopment of the building is nothing short of spectacular. The street level space where they plan to host speakers and events includes a raised platform with furniture and stadium seating, and Rink employees have added significantly to the street energy and traffic in downtown businesses and restaurants. Center Street Dental bought the former Camden Bank building on Canal Street and conducted a major renovation, rebranding themselves as Maple Way Dental. Grand Rounds, a health tech company, took occupancy on the top floor of Bates Mill Number no. 6 in March. And they currently have 50 employees and plan to grow that number to 150 within five years. And the approval of the Hartley Block will bring mixed income housing and mixed use development to Lisbon Street and a parcel of land that had, been, that had stood untouched for over a decade. Early in its term, the 2016-2017 Council approved a new comprehensive plan named Legacy Lewiston and continued to work on implementing the Riverfront Island Master Plan through the completion of a new amphitheater and improvements to the river frontage at Samar Payne Park. In addition, we'll soon begin the work of beautifying our canals into an aesthetic attraction that will create further interest and excitement spurring additional private sector investment. Lisbon Street has been repaved, including new sidewalks and amenities, and the first set of new wayfinding signs have been installed, directing people to our waterfront and downtown areas. With all of these successes, we must also ensure that we continue to provide safe, affordable, and healthy housing options. The city recently received a second $3 million grant to continue work around lead poisoning prevention in our older housing stock. In addition, the council has supported ongoing efforts to remove abandoned and distressed buildings, and over 70 such properties have been removed to date. Under the leadership of the Downtown Building Task Force, an additional code enforcement position was created, and one and a half positions in fire prevention were restored. Positions specifically intended to address issues of housing quality and safety. The city's crime rate has continued its significant decrease, and Lewiston today is one of the safest major cities and one of the safest states in the nation. Social and recreational activities continue to flourish in Lewiston. 2016 and 17 saw an increase in Lewiston's arts and cultural scene, including a public art plan that was designed, created, and implemented by several local artists. We had the opportunity to experiment with concepts such as creative crosswalks, murals, and painted fire hydrants, and we're fortunate to see an expansion of our art walk series through LA Arts, which now runs from May through December. In addition, Arts and Culture Lewiston-Auburn, a marketing collective of 19 arts and cultural organizations in central Maine, has launched an online arts and cultural events calendar and recurring newsletter. And our school system continues to grow and prosper. Several educators were recognized for their service to the students of Lewiston, including Jen Carter of Lewiston's 21st Century Program, Nazreen Griffin and Christy Clark of Longley Elementary School, Jake Langley of Lewiston Middle School, Abby Dix of Farwell Elementary School, and Jason Fuller of Lewiston High School. May saw the groundbreaking of the new Robert V. Connors Elementary School in Lewiston, slated to open in the fall of 2019, which will replace and combine the Longley and Martell Elementary Schools and upgrade the athletic fields at our high school. And athletics continue to enhance our students' love of learning and teamwork outside of the classroom. In Lewiston, our cheering squad was named both state and regional champions, while our boys' ice hockey team was recognized as state, regional, and KVAC champions. Our girls' ice hockey team was recognized with the Good Sportsmanship Award, and boys' soccer coach Mike McGraw won $5,000 for Lewiston High School as one of 15 top coaches nationwide in U.S. Cellular's The Most Valuable Coaches competition. These are just a few examples of what can be accomplished when people work together with a vision for a strong future and a commitment to do what is necessary to turn that vision into a reality. I am so very proud of all that we have achieved together over the past two years, and I look so very forward to all that we will achieve as a community over the next two years. So again, thank you all so much for sharing this special evening with us. Thank you, Councilor Cloutier. Um, I now call upon School Superintendent William Webster to approach the podium. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. 
The selection of school committee chairperson will take place in a special meeting on Wednesday, January 10th at 6.30 p.m. when the entire new school committee can be in attendance. Now I'd like to invite school committee member Gagnon to the podium to offer his remarks on behalf of the entire Lewiston School Committee. Mr. Gagnon. Good evening, distinguished guests, city council, family, and friends. Bienvenue and welcome to the beautiful Gender Franco Center, built in Little Canada many years ago in 1927 as St. Mary's Church. Today it's recognized as a beautiful theater, function hall, museum, and cultural center for all to enjoy. Certainly an asset to our community and a beautiful location to host this event. As a committee, we have certain obligations, when, uh, which include creating policies, working with an annual budget, and serving on various committees. Some would say we are elected citizens to improve the educational value of our students and the betterment of our city. I appreciate this opportunity to speak on behalf of the school committee this evening, and I'd like to take a moment to, take, to talk about something which is near to my heart, which is the arts. In 1973, the new high school was to have a theater and arts department built right next to the main entrance. This arts building was halted and postponed for various reasons. 45 years later, we are here today with, the, with little space to enrich our students with the proper level of arts. Next to the high school, we currently have the Connors grade school being built. Within the area, we also have Lewiston High School, Longley Elementary School, and the Colise. Alongside will be various recreational and athletic fields for our students and community to enjoy. Certainly a campus which will reflect the opportunity and quality we expect to provide with our students. However, we must not forget what was left behind 45 years ago. Time has certainly passed us quickly and we must resurface and rejuvenate the arts within our schools. Imagine the perspective of future Lewiston residents looking to raise their children within our district, but with a lackluster arts department in the basement of our schools. Instead, let's create a modern building where students and parents enter and experience artwork in a beautiful gallery. Walk into working classrooms where visitors can actually see students forming arts with their hands attending live performances and community events such as this inauguration within our own theater. Imagine the enrichment we would provide. We can imagine, but it's currently the missing keystone which has been left behind. We must place this at the forefront of our community. We must instill a better sense of artistic pride within our students, our children, our citizens, and future residents. It's the keystone to a better growing community. The recently formed Visual and Performing Arts Committee needs your attention and participation. When St. Mary's Church became the Gendron Franco Center, it was supported and created by our community. Can you imagine our community without it? We have certainly gained from its history and presence. We need your motivation to gain the strength this new facility will bring to Lewiston High School. The arts at Lewiston High School cannot remain in storage rooms. Let's unpack what we left behind. Let's rejoice and rejuvenate the pride we have in the arts. For the enrichment of our students, our community, and for everyone who visits Lewiston, let's instill in them the same level of education we value and entrust in our local colleges. A campus full of extracurricular activity involving athletic talent, live performance, multimedia streaming of live events, to a gallery to showcase works of art. As your, as your school committee, we represent our city, and we look forward to your support with the next evolution of education 
On behalf of the school committee and myself, I thank you for attending and have a good evening. Thank you, Mr. Gagnon. We will now enjoy a musical performance by the Lewiston High School Blue Notes. Would the members of the Blue Notes please come forward to present their musical selection?
Thank you, our Lewiston High School students and their instructor. Excellent performance. We appreciate your participation in tonight's ceremony. Thank you. We will now like to invite Mayor Bouchard to the podium to deliver his inaugural address. We won't be clapping in 30 minutes. <laughs> Just kidding. I won't sing, I promise. Should be the high point. So welcome, good evening to all. I believe in Lewiston. And I'd like to thank the people of Lewiston for believing in me. I'd also like to recognize at this time our governor, Paul LePage, and our congressman, Bruce Poliquin, and thank both of them for taking the time to be here with us tonight. Glad you found your seat, Congressman. Your support, gentlemen, will be critical to Lewiston's success moving forward. Mayor McDonald, thank you for your words tonight and for the mentorship you have given me over the last three years. For many in Lewiston, young and old, your tenure as mayor sparked an interest in local government and public policy greater than any other in many years. Your valuable gift of civic engagement has left a lasting, positive impression upon Lewiston's government. Thank you. <laughs> to my wife, Allison, the one who allows me to serve the city I love, I cannot thank you enough for your love and your support. While my mother and stepfather are no longer with us, I believe they would be proud tonight. My mom taught me the value of a dollar, the welfare, which we were recipients of, was meant as a hand up and not a hand out. From my stepfather, I learned about the value of hard work. And finally, if not for the time spent with my grandparents, Romeo and June Bouchard, I would not be standing here tonight. My grandfather, a 38-year city employee, instilled in me a pride in Lewiston and a sense of place that has never left and inspires me still. And that pride is justified. Lewiston is a great city with amazing assets and enormous potential. Geographically, we are less than 60 minutes away from more people than any other city in Maine. We have mall, mill, downtown, retail office and warehouse space at better rates than any other city in southern Maine. Lewiston has land available for development, much of it with direct access to the Maine Turnpike. Older friends and neighbors will recall how many great locally owned dining options Lewiston had in the 60s and 70s. And something great is happening here again. Local restaurants like Da Vinci's, Rails, Marco's, Fishbones and Fuel are here. All establishments that national chains cannot touch. Many smaller iconic eateries like Val's, Luigi's, Simonis's and Forage can also only be found here in Lewiston. It's an exciting time to see these and many other establishments grow and help make Lewiston a destination once again. Lewiston is thriving in other areas as well. Our new state-of-the-art athletic fields will attract championship events in every outdoor sport. We have three newer elementary schools, dozens of historic sites, walking trails, many quiet, beautiful suburban neighborhoods, a thriving art community, excellent health care and post-secondary education facilities, and so much more. We are a great city. Yet we are saddled with an image problem. Many negative aspects of that image are based solely on ignorance. Moving forward, we must highlight our positives, recognize our shortcomings, and advance real, actionable solutions. By addressing our problems, building upon our many assets, and writing a new narrative, Lewiston will show all of Maine and New England that we are back. So with all the positives, why aren't we Maine's premier city? The answer comes to policy. Tax-exempt property in Lewiston is currently growing at a faster rate than taxable. While the city works hard to fast-track subsidized housing projects, residential development is discouraged. It's time to steer away from the failed policies which have taken hold over the last three decades. At $38,000, Lewiston's median income is a negative to many businesses, investors, and developers. 
Our policies must encourage development that grows our tax base, making us more attractive to high-end residential and market-rate housing development. Attracting higher populations of government-dependent and transient residents will never raise our median income or improve our image. Our current policies discourage affluence by building invisible walls around our poorest neighborhoods. While most landlords downtown ask for more parking, there's a movement to eliminate parking standards. Discouraging the freedom and opportunity to grow that owning a car offers we must reject taxpayer-funded social engineering experiments which discourage and hinder our poorest residents from lifting themselves out of poverty. At the same time, we must also continue the work that will ensure quality, lead-free housing remains available for our low-income residents. Lewiston and other community entities have been working hard to address lead poisoning prevention, and we need to diligently continue on that path. Additionally, our zoning ordinances must begin to address the erosion of our neighborhoods and property values. Through zoning loopholes, once beautiful single-family zones are being converted into multifamily rental tracks, and that is unacceptable. While we have had many great economic development initiatives, as Council President Cloutier pointed out, there are certain areas where a new direction is needed. For 20 years, we've kicked an empty mill building down the road and called it economic development. In that time, Lewiston has lost real development opportunities on that site. We need to move on Bates 5. The dollar option agreement will again be up for renewal this February. I will be proposed we renew it only contingent upon a referendum to let the voters decide once and for all if we continue to kick down the road or if we explore new opportunities with a cleared site. Speaking of referendums, it was very clear in November that believing in Auburn was just as popular as believing in Lewiston. In rejecting the merger, we proudly affirmed our identity, our rich, unique history, and our self-determination. Over the past month, Mayor Levesque and I have spent a considerable amount of time discussing our sister cities, and we look forward to the highest level of municipal cooperation seen in many years. The harmful, false narrative of a divide between our governments that has trumpeted over the last few years will have no place in either of our administrations. First on our list is the creation of a task force to explore the idea of a port authority around our airport, encompassing rail, intermodal, and local transit. This is a golden opportunity that could save Lewiston taxpayers money, reduce bureaucracy, improve our public transportation system, and increase economic opportunity in the region. And finally, for those with concerns of our high numbers of welfare dependent popula populations, Lewiston, we need to come to real solutions to lift these populations off of government dependence and on a real path to living the American dream. The taxpayers of Lewiston are among the most benevolent in the state, but there is a limit to our benevolence. We need help from our leaders at the state and federal level, reforming our welfare system, setting sound immigration policies, patching holes in the asylum system, granting work permits in a timelier manner. Lewiston's General Assistance Office is one of Maine's premier work placement programs. It doesn't need to be reinvented. It needs to continue to be leveraged. We must work to maintain and improve access to adult education, English language learning, and job placement training. At his first inaugural address, President Reagan stated, it is time for us to realize that we are too great a nation to limit ourselves to small dreams. We are not, as some would have us believe, doomed to an inevitable decline. I do not believe in a fate that will fall on us no matter what we do. I do believe in a fate that will fall on us if we do nothing. So, with all the creative energy at our command, let us begin an era of national renewal. Let us renew our determination, our courage, and our strength. Like President Reagan, I believe in action. And I believe in our great potential for renewal. In short, I believe in Lewiston. And so, I pledge to you that every day I serve as your mayor, I will rise to meet our challenges. I will ask the council and school board 
to do the same. And together, we will work with staff to take a fresh approach, think bolder, and strive to make Lewiston a better place for us all. Thank you all for believing in Lewiston. We will now have the benediction. Will Chris Pomelo, chaplain for the Lewiston Police Department, please come forward to offer the benediction. Could you all stand with me as we close in prayer? <clears throat> Our Heavenly Father, we ask for your benediction to rest on us today. As you have graciously preserved our city throughout the years, and have led us in marvelous ways. Grant that we may be worthy of high calling as the city of Lewiston of the great state of Maine. We ask a special blessing upon those who have paved the way to this great city with honor and diligence. May we continue to do it with integrity. Make us reverent the use of our freedom, just in the exercise of our power, and the generous generosity of the protection of the weak. Inspire the men and women who direct our city. May they be guided with wisdom. We do especially pray for our mayor, that you may grant him the courage to move forward from this day as he spurs our city on to great things. In all duties, grant your help. In all perplexes, grant your counsel. In all dangers, grant your protection. In all sorrows, grant your peace. Now to him who is able to do far more abundantly beyond all that we ask or think, according to the power that works within us. To him be the glory in Christ Jesus throughout our generation forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Chaplain Pomelo. Our celebration is almost complete. We invite everyone to please join us for a reception downstairs in Heritage Hall immediately following this ceremony. Thank you for attending tonight's ceremony of the elected officials. Will the combined unit's color guard please come forward to retire the colors? Councilor Lillard Joy. Mr. Mayor, I move that we adjourn. Do we have a second? School Committee Member Parks. Okay, we have a motion. All those in favor of adjourning, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Okay, I call this meeting adjourned.